We report on a heartbreaking story of how years of hard work topped with excellent academic grades are all in vain for a young man who has gone through some of the country's best schools. Take a listen. Kelvin Ochieng scored straight A's at the famous Maranda High School before proceeding to the University of Nairobi, where he did, listen to this, actuarial science and graduated with, yes, first class honors. But as Citizen Television's investigative reporter Purity Mwambia reports, this was not enough for Kelvin Ochieng, who ended up homeless in the streets of the capital. Here is First Class Betrayal with Purity Mwambia. My name is Kevin Ochieng. Uh, this is Madara Slums in Kosovo. This is where I'm hosted by my friend. And uh, I've been staying here with him. The heavy stench of raw sewage welcomes us. Kosovo in Nairobi's Madare slums. In Madare, I have to endure the smell in the slums. I have to endure the filthy state. The smell remains there. There are no proper latrines. And uh, living here, it's uh, degrading. In this valley, you've got to watch your back. It is one of the most dangerous slums in Nairobi. Armed men live here. You can walk here at night and uh, you're beaten up. So holding a phone myself, having a smartphone is, is a problem. We are here to meet 24-year-old Kevin Ocheng. A first honors class graduate in actuarial science from the University of Nairobi. I was frustrated and uh, I went to live in the streets because there was no job coming. Mm -hmm. He is lucky to call this place home. He lived on the streets of Nairobi for a year. Naisha Pajuru, Nabishtango, Minyameni host. I don't have a place to stay, but this is much better compared to sleeping in the streets. Mm -hmm. Yes, come inside. <laughs> ah, okay. Tower, sand. It's okay, come inside. Can I have a seat? Inside this tiny house, shared by three other men, we find Christopher Lo, the man who rescued Kevin from the street. He tells us how they met. I found some dude, he was sleeping on the grass. There, that particular day. And we live, eh, bro, bro, I'm not so easy. Eh, can I be a. I can. You know, she does a job, I'm a fan, and I can be any graduate. It was hilarious. That one piqued my interest. I was going to talk to you. 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 I was going to talk to Nazina Madawati. Kevin's story is that of a student who worked hard right from primary school through secondary up to the university. A closer look at his certificate tells it all. Pointed not to score very good marks. I got 392 out of 500. I went to Miranda High School. I performed the and uh, scored an A. I was yearning to look, I was looking forward to a good university course that would uh, give me a good job. So I took cultural science. I successfully got a first class honors in actual science. He was in this class of 2011, the year that Miranda High School topped the country in KCSE exam. He was their index number one. And all through, he saw a bright future that would help him rescue his grandmother and sister from poverty. But life turned upside down for him. I've applied to Saiton for their graduate training program. I've applied to Central Bank. I applied to Deloitte as well as PwC. 
and uh, the, pro the problem of not getting the job comes when I feel I'm qualified and uh, I don't successfully get the job. So I become frustrated. And that's how I found myself in the streets. If he had gone back to his rural home in Nyakati village where he grew up. Uh, it happened. I had gone home before. Found back home there was absolute poverty and they all believed that I would be the one to bring them out of this. They all believe that Kevin has gone to university and he's the star of this family. I would uh, bring my grandmother out of poverty. And that belief haunted me because I believed that I should be responsible for them. This frustration was weighing up on me until I imagined suicide. Poverty or lack of money haunted Kevin. He did not even attend his graduation. He couldn't afford it. Uh, it happened that uh, during my graduation I could not afford uh, the graduation fees. How much? It was just 4,000. We asked him how then was he able to pay for his university fee. I was admitted through a regular program, the government program. And uh, I successfully applied for a help loan, as well, I successfully applied for a Chinese loan, a Chinese scholarship, I mean, a Chinese scholarship, and uh, these paid all my fees, yeah, these paid all my fees. I was also a beneficiary of uh, CDF bursary. So my grandmother never forked out a shilling to pay to teach me through university. Later, Kevin takes me to Mishuki Gardens near Gloop Cinema Roundabout. Are you sure? It's when? This was his abode. His belongings still remain here. <laughs> The following day, we are at the market street. Kevin works alongside these parking gangs. He's only allowed to wash cars here to earn a living. Yani tu watu na scramble kupata gari. Ju watu wakosha ni wengi hapa hivi. So kupata riziki kupata gari gari nne ama gari tatu. And by chance, Austin Olu, one of Kevin's former classmates at Maranda High School and Nairobi University, happens to pass by. We asked him about Kevin's life. I can't really get my hand at, at how I feel about the fact that Obede, Index 1 in my year, who went on to become one of the best actual students at UN, is in the streets. It, 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 it's something else. Kevin stores his certificate in a cyber cafe, hoping one day he will get a job and have a decent life. Kevin's story reveals the ticking time bomb of the unemployed youth who worked hard, scored A's, and their certificates have turned into just a piece of paper. He is on his way to join the parking gangs on the streets of Nairobi. Purity Mwambia, Citizen TV.